An extraordinary organization in Tanzania is training rats to save lives. Apopo work with African giant pouched rats, teaching them to detect landmines left in post-conflict countries. The trainers in Morokoro are all locals, like Fidelis Gali, who's been working with the Popo for seven years. We need to make the world a safe and better place to live. Their work has extended to sniffing out positive tuberculosis samples, helping reduce cases of this highly contagious and fatal disease. Fidelis's passionate commitment to the work has seen him promoted to a leadership position in the TB program. I'm doing this job from my deep of my heart. Let the world know about what Apopo is doing. Let the world know about rat. At the foothills of the Uluguru Mountains in Tanzania, a small organization has adopted a groundbreaking and unusual approach to tackle two of Africa's most deathly epidemics, landmines and tuberculosis. At their headquarters, a popo breed African giant pouched rats, training them to sniff out landmines that still scatter post-conflict countries and to pick up positive TB samples that clinics have missed. We start working early in the morning from 6 o'clock. Why we start working early in the morning? Because uh, these rats don't like to work under sun. Loading the rat in the transport cages, they're ready to go to the minefield. The idea to train rats for landmine detection came to Belgian product designer and development engineer Bart Virgens in 1995. Bart had taken a keen interest in exploring solutions for the global landmine problem, which still affects some 60 countries around the world. These buried explosives and other remnants of war cause tragic accidents and pose a barrier to development and economic growth. Experts estimate the number of landmines buried in Africa alone is in the millions, and tens of thousands of civilians have been casualties as a result. Bart began exploring scent detection as a solution to the landmine problem. During his research, he realized that the obvious choice, dogs, weren't right for the job. With their susceptibility to disease, expensive training and upkeep, and their need to build relationships with specific trainers, they weren't viable. So, he turned his sights on the native African giant pouched rats of Tanzania. Their sense of smell rivals that of a dog. They're cheaper to keep, easy to train, and already accustomed to the environment. What's more, at less than two kilograms, they are too light to set off the landmines they identify. I knew rats very well from my boyhood when I bred all kinds of rodents, mice, hamsters, gerbils. I knew they were highly sociable, intelligent, uh, very friendly creatures who were keen to perform simple tasks in return for a food reward. These giant African pouched rats collect food in their pouches and then store it in underground burrows to find it later on based on their olfactory sense, on their sense of smell. And this searching for 
objects hidden underground is of course something which is, is really close to the landmine detection task. Fidelis Gali joined Apopo seven years ago and has become one of the organization's most experienced trainers, having worked extensively with both landmine and tuberculosis detection rats over the years. He has spent most of his life in Morogoro, born and raised in the shadow of the mountains. Before joining Apopo, Fidelis spent four years working with the Norwegian People's Aid, training dogs to locate explosives. As a trainer there, Fidelis became well acquainted not only with the humanitarian issue of landmine removal, but also with training animals to achieve that goal. However, the rats took some getting used to. The names rat, it depends on the trainer of the animal. If you have a friend, if you have a famous person that you admire the behavior, you admire what he is doing, you just name the rat. When I came here, trust me, I was very scared first to hold a rat like this. Ah. I said, can I, will I manage to work with a rat? Eh? I found people playing with rat, putting rat like this. I said, wow, <laughs> these rats are going to eat my ears, my friend. <laughs> All of a popo's rats are bred at the headquarters in Murogoro and undergo a socializing and training process that lasts several months before they qualify to work in areas with active landmines. Kazi yangu unachukua na weka dume na jike, panya dume na jike kwa ajili ili waweze kuzaa. Baada ya wiki tano kuzaliwa, huwa nawachukua na zoesha urafiki na binadamu. <laughs> Socializing the rats also means getting them used to smells and noises, so these won't distract them when they're working. Trainers like Albert take the rats to areas like garages, where they can explore scents like oil and petrol and get used to the sound of passing cars. You know, this animal had never been a pet before. Now, why we socialize? We socialize them to create friendship, to create social environment. I mean, I need to trust the animal. I need to trust the rat. But the rat should also trust me that I am a very, very good friend. Landmine detection rats are introduced to a small tract of earth with a few easy-to-find tea eggs centered with the explosive TNT. With the sound of a clicker and a food reward, the rats are conditioned to associate identifying the scent with a positive and tasty result. The rat progresses to a larger area on the floor where the tea eggs are more sparsely hidden. The trainers keep working with the rats here until they have proved they are ready to move to advanced training. This takes place close to the Apopo headquarters on what is now the largest landmine training field in Africa. Kwanza unachotakiwa kabla ya kufanya kazi na panya uwe na moyo wa kuwapenda panya. Ukishakuwa na moyo wa kuwapenda panya na kazi utaiona ni rahisi. Na baadhi wanapenda na wao waweze kufanya kama mimi. Lakini wengine ah unawezaje unaogopa? <laughs> Naambia panya ni rafiki kabisa. Wamekuwa rafiki, nikambia ukiwafundisha panya, ni rafiki, na ukiwapenda. Kazi ya nafanya vizuri. Apo, apo, kwenye tabia za wanyama, ya ni tabia za panya. Kuna wengine ni asili yao tu ni ukali, tangu wakiwa mdogo, ni mkali, mpaka anakuwa mkubwa. Na mwingine ni mpole, mwingine mtundu tu, lakini sio mkali. Lakini wote 
nitaz harufu ya maua nampenda Olga. Olga ni mtendaji mzuri wa kazi ni mpole hana shida muda wote yupo active Now when they are ready, they make a pair of uh, two training with one rat. They harness the rat. And uh, put on their legs a rope, so that that rope will, will be leading the rat to go. They have uh, tape measures. They will put in a box of uh, hundred square meters. They step from zero to 50 centimeters. 50 centimeters, 50 centimeters, until they finish hundred square meters. They will be working in zigzag, but uh, following the tape measures measurement, some of the boxes have landmine, but some of them don't have landmine. This is because of the training procedures. Now, this African giant poacher rat nicknamed the uh, hero rat. When they are approaching the area that uh, have uh, a smell of TNT, where there is mine, some can groom before scratching, some can start sniffing on the air, and then start scratching. Those are just behaviors of the rat. Of course, have something to tell to the trainer. Here there is something, you know. Now, because there is uh, science in these training boxes, the trainer will know, yes, the rat is correct, there is mine. And then the trainer will activate the clicker telling the rat that what you have been doing, you are correct. Please stop what you are doing, come back for your reward. The accuracy of this rat is very good. In an area with active landmines, the brilliance of using the rats becomes clear. Once a rat has identified a potential landmine, a mine deactivation worker is able to carefully dig around the area and run a fuse to explode it from a safe distance. The beauty of Apopo is that we train wherever we go, national people, 
to become experts in this detection rats technology. And that creates jobs and that solves at once several problems. Social, economic, it builds peace, it builds public health and it simply provides equal economic opportunities. Kwa hiyo tuna jisifu kwa kazi yetu nzuri waliotenda banya kwa kusevu maisha ya wenzetu. Manake mwanzoni alikuwa hawezi kufanya shughuli zozote za kiuchumi pamoja na za kimaendeleo kutokana na mabomu. I'm doing this job from my deep of my heart. To save someone's life is a prestige. Life is only once. If you get it, you get it. If you lose it, you lose it. Apopo has deployed rats in Angola, Mozambique and Cambodia. Their work has led to over 100,000 landmines and remnants of war being destroyed and close to 22 million square meters of cleared land being released to local communities. With the landmine program firmly in place, Apopo turned their sights on the world's leading cause of death due to an infectious disease, tuberculosis. Tuberculosis just like landmines, form a structural barrier to development. Tuberculosis is the second largest infectious killer in the world. Yearly, still about three million people remain undetected with the disease, and about one and a half million people die from tuberculosis. And the hero rats are a great way to drastically scale up case detection at an early stage so that we can treat people early, so that they don't die, and can regain a productive life in society. Apopo established their TB research and training facilities in Morokoro in 2005. The rats proved to be highly effective, capable of swiftly and efficiently checking thousands of TB sputum samples a month. But as an increasing number of clinics began to use Apopo's technology, a problem became clear. The process was taking too long. Morokoro is half a day's drive from the capital Dar es Salaam, where most of the participating clinics are based. This meant getting samples tested and results back took several days. Most patients had gone back home by this point and are difficult to reach, so more positive TB patients slipped past. The situation led to Apopo's next big step, establishing a state-of-the-art laboratory in the country's capital in 2016. Fidelis, who showed natural ability and passion for the TB work, was selected to work at the new lab. When we established, uh, we were thinking of having a facility in Dar es Salaam, we need someone there with the vast experience who can lead the team. Fidelis provides a huge support in running of the center in Dar es Salaam. Today, the lab in Dar es Salaam serves 24 of the capital's clinics. The Morokoro lab continues to do the same work, serving several local and rural clinics. Apopo has a process of collecting the samples. First, a person who is sick should go to the hospital. Apopo comes. They get the samples that has been tested by the technician at the hospital. Those that has been found MTB positive, and those that has been found that they are MTB negative. When we finish with that, we heat inactivate the samples first. The sample are safe before presenting them to the rat. There will be no infection to the rat, no infection to the people. Now, once the samples uh, they have been heat inactivated already, they need to be prepared to be ready for the evaluation. They will be put in these sample bars.
In the evaluation room, we find three people. The first person, we call him Wuhai trainer. The second person is called a handler. And the third person is called an observer. The trainer opens the sample hole. He or she is telling the lad, tell me please, is this sample contain TB or not? The lad will say, through scratching or posing the nose on the sample hole. The rat says number four is positive. Mm -hmm. The observer sees that this, this, this is positive, the rat is correct. The observer is activating the clicker. The young TB detection rats are trained in much the same way as the landmine rats. Positive TB samples have a specific smell, which the rats are taught to identify through the clicker and reward training. So they will keep on waking willing, eager to work, you know, they need to find so that they can get that thing. Six. Once the click has been delivered, that means somebody's life will go on. Somebody's life is needed to continue. Nine. One rat can uh, examine, I would say a minimum of a hundred, a hundred sputum samples in 20 minutes. All of our right, they are very, very good. Trust me, that's why we named them heroes. Right like Chewa, we call them genius. Very, very good, right? His performance never, never fall down. He's always active, always eager to work, always want to find, always want to save life. <laughs> it's my friend. Fidelis shares his home with his wife and baby daughter in Morogoro, which is where he was born and has lived most of his life. Quality time with his little family is more important than ever because his job at the lab in Dar es Salaam means he has to leave them behind for a week or two at a time. Yani, kawaida. <laughs> Fidelis stops past the Morogoro lab to wish his colleagues well before heading back to the capital city for his working week. My family, when I was leaving, my baby was crying. I don't know why. She's still very young, but she was crying, you know. They're missing me a lot, a lot. And uh, my wife understand. My wife understand, understand my responsibilities. But my kid, I think, she doesn't understand, that's why. <laughs> Night has fallen by the time Fidelis arrives at the Dar es Salaam lab, but there's no time for him to rest because the lab's main work happens when the rest of the city sleeps. <laughs> Having collected the sputum samples from clinics around the city during the day, the team gets to work by early evening, organizing and preparing the samples to be tested by the rats. T 
TB is a very dangerous disease, very, very dangerous disease. Every single minute, three people are dying for TB. We need a fast, accurate, but cheap technology to stop the spread of TB. We see an advantage of finding uh, around 40% TB positive among what was considered negative by the hospitals. So we are adding 40% uh, more TB cases than what was found by, by the hospitals. Without the rats would have been in the street spreading the disease, also continue suffering, even dying. Once the rats have been through all the samples and the data of their findings has been tabulated, the lab technicians get to work, verifying the positive samples the rats identified. This is done through microscopy. They work through the night so that the results are ready to be sent to the different clinics by the next morning. The opening of the lab is one of many new developments for Apopo. As the program expands, rats have been deployed in minefields in Angola, Mozambique and Cambodia. They've recently registered a landmine detection program in Colombia and plan to open a TB lab in Ethiopia. Little rats are not working with us only here. This is the headquarter of training, but we have different centers working with rats that have been trained here. Any accredited Apopo trainer can work with this well-trained animal. I think it's better for Popo in the future to cover the whole country, to go everywhere, and to go to the other countries. Because this is an innovative technology, it is new technology. So, because it is helpful, it should go to everywhere. Let the world know about Popo. Let the world know about what Popo is doing. Let the world know about rat. But let the world use the rat to stop TB.